Their last meal with Jesus is not going to be a prelude to His death. Their last meal with Jesus is a prelude to their ministry. <clears throat> There's a problem with endings. When the movie ends and all the loose ends are tied up, when any dissonance in the notes resolves and the song concludes, the energy is gone as well. Nothing drives things forward any longer. Everything is settled. Now as Christians, we are bound to an ancient story. And without recalling that story and embracing that story, we cannot be the people of God. But that story has not ended. It has not faded to black. And the great preacher Tom Long suggests that, that our reading, this strange ending to John that comes after the ending of John, may in fact serve to draw the curtain up again, to unsettle things and put the energy back into an unfinished story. And of course, Peter is a special case. And this story at the end of John's Gospel, after the end of John's Gospel, recalls how Peter's story seems to have ended. On the night of Jesus' arrest, a confident, rash Peter boasts that he would go to his own death in order to stay with Jesus. But instead, Peter has denied Jesus three times as he stood warming himself by a charcoal fire. But that is not the end of Peter's story. Standing by a different charcoal fire, Peter's threefold denial is now undone. God's love embraces Peter and restores him. But that restoration does not conclude his story. There is more to come. It is a beginning. Feed my sheep, tend my lambs. Follow me. This second ending of John's Gospel leaves many questions unanswered and much work still to be done. What happens to Peter? It doesn't say. I presume that he followed Jesus' command and cared for Jesus' flock and presumably that led to his death in some way. But clearly the story continues and much of it remains to be written. And now some nearly 2,000 years later, I wonder if we don't need another, another ending to the story. Something like that ending after the first ending of John that unsettled things and injected energy and momentum towards a future still to come. I can't help but think that religion has grown far too settled, far too fixed. We humans like things settled, but without the tension of some tension, some energy provided by that tension, things stagnate. We grow listless, and things simply become habit. Now you don't need to be a social scientist or a researcher to know that young people have been leaving the church in droves over the last several decades. Many of those people are children of some of you. But those scientists and researchers can tell us some interesting information about those people who have left. For the most part, they don't have any qualms, any objections to the beliefs or doctrines of their parents' faith. And for the most part, they didn't leave to find better churches. Turns out that most of them still believe in God and they believe in being good. They just don't see much need for the church part. They can be good and believe in God without church. And I think they got their notion that what goes on at church isn't very important from us. 
we got so settled, so accommodated to the culture of, our, of the world around us. We acted like the story was over and there wasn't anything significant left to do. We even acted like there wasn't much important or significant going on in our worship. A member in the pews on Easter told me this story. It seems that someone was visiting here with family or friends for, for Easter. And as the service ran a little bit over an hour, not real surprising, on Easter with extra music and extra people taking communion, this person said loudly enough that people around him could hear, you said it only lasted an hour. <laughs> now, I suppose this person can be excused. I mean, for all I know, he wasn't even a Christian. But we act just like him a lot of the time. We check our watches. People complain if the service goes a few minutes over. They grumble if we sang hymns that they don't like. But if we really expected to encounter Jesus here, would we really care what songs we sang? or how long we stay. But we act like we're just telling an old story and singing some songs. Perhaps it's warm and comforting in a way. Perhaps we enjoy it. But it isn't meant to stir anything up or get anything started. The story's been written and the screen has faded to black. Like the disciples of our gospel, we have settled back into our everyday routines. We've heard the news that Jesus was raised. We may even believe it, but that's an old story, and it has little to do with our day-to-day -day lives. At least that's what we've communicated to those who grew up in the church. And they, at least some of them, have taken us at our word. And so they've left. And who can blame them? But the good news is that Jesus does not condemn disciples who settle back into old routines, who live like the resurrection doesn't much matter, who fish aimlessly in the dark. Jesus does not even condemn Peter for denying him. Jesus just wants to get the story started again. And so he feeds his disciples. And he calls them, calls us once more. Feed my sheep. Tend my lamb. Follow me. And the story continues. Thanks be to God.